Chapter 16, Urinalysis, Blood flu Body Fluids, and Other Specimens. This is a Cliff Notes version of the larger lecture. I tried to consolidate it to focus on key topics. I suggest you view the larger lecture um, as well to get some more information, but I keyed in because this chapter is so large on some key topics and key concepts in this chapter. Collecting and transporting urine and other bodily fluids, um, if it's difficult to obtain, so this would be like cerebrospinal fluid, um, gastro um, secretions, things that would have to be obtained by a doctor or nurse. Quality of the laboratory test result is only good as a specimen collected and adhere to standard precautions. For example, if we were to collect a urine sample and the cup were to touch the outside of the genital area that could potentially contaminate our sample, therefore not um, creating a good specimen. Collecting and transporting urine and other bodily fluid specimens, we're going to label the um, container, not the lid. The sample and for infants urine collection uses a pediatric urine collection bag that is adhesive which looks like this around the opening to firmly attach to the infant's genitals and then they will collect the sample from there. The label on the urine container must include the time of collection, the type of specimen if it were to be urine, cerebral spinal fluid, um, a wound culture, it could also be like um, fluid from in, within the joints, um, specialized collection process, instructions regarding whether a specimen was refrigerated prior to transport, and initials of who oversaw the collection. Test requested and attending um, physician's name is essential. So the routine urinalysis is the most frequently requested laboratory procedure. It's useful indication of body health. It's performed on the first morning urine, a random specimen, and it detects diseases and disorders. Please reference table 16 slash 1 and 16 slash 2 in your textbook. I will also have a detailed chart that breaks down the collection of all these various types of specimen collections, as well as transportation and also to um, kind of time limit on things. In the routine urine analysis, it's going to include physical, chemical, and sometimes microscopic analysis of the urine sample. Physical properties include color, transparency versus cloudiness, odor, and concentration is detected through specific gravity. So we might see a urine sample that is green or purple or very pale and pale yellow or dark yellow. We're also going to look too for odor. And this basically means when we open the container, do we notice anything? Um, and we also want to kind of make note of that. Um, sometimes the color changes due to medications a patient might be taking. Chemical urinalysis, which is the lab that's performed in class is determined by using plastic reagent strips impregnated with the color reacting substances that test for presence of glucose, protein, blood, red blood cells and hemoglobin, white blood cells, ketones, bacteria, bilirubin and other constitutes. A lot of times a physician will order a urine sample on a patient with an altered mental status to kind of give us a baseline before we draw blood. Single specimen collection is the preferred urine specimen for most analysis. It's the first voided urine of the morning. When urine is most concentrated, the specimen should be transported to the UA section promptly for analysis or chemistry within one hour after the patient voids. If transportation and analysis can occur within this time frame, the urine should be refrigerated. Please make note that we want the label to be affixed onto the container itself, not on the lid or the biohazard bag. Urine culture and sem sensitivity, also referred to as CNS. It's a clean catch midstream urine collection. The patient is instructed to void approximately one third of the urine into the toilet and collect approximately one fourth in a readily available sterile cup and allow the rest to pass into the toilet. We instruct the patient to clean the genital area with a soapy towelette and not to let the cup touch any area outside the genital area due to contamination. Urine culture and sensitivity is used to detect presence or absence of an infecting organism and is transported to microbiology. This is a blood auger plate that shows E. coli, which would present as fluorescent pink. And this would then give the physician the 
bacteria, and then they could determine what antibiotic would treat it. Um, it's really, really crucial for the urine culture and sensitivity that the patient adheres to the directions of the midstream clean catch. The directions for this for both female and male can be found in your laboratory book. It's in the UA lab that's found in your lab book. So I'd ask that you review that because that will give you the instructions and gives you an idea of how the patient should collect the sample. Timed urine collection is very different. A timed urine collection is going to include, for some uh, laboratory analysis, 24-hour other time specimen urine sa specimens must be obtained. Be aware of the protocol, which we will review in this chapter. Specimens be obtained to assist in preventing prevention of collection errors. The 24-hour urine collection would include providing a patient with a hat in a 24-hour urine collection container, sometimes two. We're going to identify the patient, explain the whole procedure to the patient, provide written directions. Providing the patient with written directions gives them something to reference back to. Explain the importance of hand washing for urine collection and give the patient the container and the lid. We're going to add any required preservatives to the container before giving it to the patient, such as hydrochloric acid. We're going to write the preservative and any precautions in the collection container label and place the label on the container, not the lid. As when it comes back to the lab, we dispose of the lid. Collecting a 24-hour urine specimen, um, include the following information on the label, the patient's name, patient's identification number, which could be their birthday or medical record number, starting collection date and time, ending collection date and time, and the name of the requested laboratory test. This just gives you an example of what that label might look like. Instruct the patient verbally how to collect the 24-hour urine sample. Collection of a 24-hour urine specimen begins with emptying the bladder and discarding the first urine passed. The ex exact time should be written on the container because that will be the start time of collection upon when you void the next time after emptying your bladder. Except for the first, Urine discarded. All urine should be collected during the next 24-hour period. Tell the patient to continue collecting and saving all urine samples for a complete 24-hour period. We instruct the patient not to travel, to go out, um, because they we need every single sample that they produce. Um, so it's advisable that to make sure that they don't have any travel plans or anything like that while they're collecting the sam sample. Instruct the patient to close the lid securely and gently mix and invert the bottle after each urine sample is added. Remind the patient to urinate at the end of collection period and to include this urine in the 24-hour collection. You're going to tell the patient to urinate before having a bowel movement because having contaminants like that could um, cause false test results. Instruct the patient to refrigerate the entire specimen after adding each collection during the 24-hour period and warn the patient of any preservatives in the container. Warn the patient not to add anything except urine in the container and not to discard any urine during collection periods. Um, I've seen stuff in urine collection containers that shouldn't be, for example, toys, um, toilet paper, so we, we want to make sure none of that's in there. Normal intake of fluids during the collection period is desirable unless otherwise indicated by the physician. Some laboratory analysis requires special dietary restrictions. Give these instructions to the patient. We're going to transport the 24-hour urine specimen to the clinical laboratory as soon as possible and place the specimen in an insulated bag or portable cooler to maintain its cool temperature. It must remain refrigerated to prevent bacteria from growing. Urine cytology is a discipline in which the body cells are studied to detect various diseases, including inflammatory disorders and cancers. Cytology specimens can be obtained from urine as well as cerebral spinal fluid and other bodily fluids. One staining procedure is a pap stain, and this is what it would look like underneath a microscope, and this is to detect HPV in females or cervical cancer. The cerebral spinal fluid, it's obtained by a physician through a spinal tap or lumbar puncture. This would be an example of an unre um, a crucial sample that would be what we consider unretrievable, so if we lost it, it would be really hard to recollect. It's collected by medical staff to diagnose meningitis, brain abscess, subarachnoid 
hemorrhage, central nervous system cancers, multiple sclerosis, and other disorders. They're collected in three sterile containers, uh, less than one ml each. First tube is usually sent to chemistry and immunology studies. Second tube is used for clinical microbiology testing. And the third tube is used for cytological cell counts and hematological hematology differentials, as shown here. If transportation can occur immediately, the specimen for chemistry should be refrigerated. The specimens for clinical microbiology and hematology should, should be kept at room temperature. This is an example of what a lumbar puncture looks like and how they'd collect those. The test most commonly performed would be a total protein level, glucose level, cell count, microbiological, chloride level, and cryptococcal antigen determinations. Again, a needle is inserted into the lumbar of the spine, um, and they will collect small amounts of cerebral spinal fluid. This should be clear in color. In our lab, we get fecal specimens. Reasons for stool fecal specimens include detect parasites, ova and parasites, enteric diseases such as Salmonella, Shigella, Staph aureus, and viruses. These would be the containers we'd have the patient collect for an um, detection of a parasite, and this is just some pictures of some ovas that um, is like the very first stage of a parasite, basically the stage of an egg. Proper specimen collection procedure, we give a patient um, a collecting container, instruct the patient to avoid urinating in the container, and we're going to give them that disposable hat I showed you from the urine collection. They won't collect directly into the container itself because it has a preservative in it because urine can kill the microorganism in the collected stool specimen. So we're gonna instruct the patient to wash the outside of the specimen container after collection and to wash his or her hands. The specimen container must be properly sealed to prevent leakage and contamination. For child collection, uh, the hat can be placed under the toilet seat so that child can sit on the toilet, transport it to the lavatory immediately. Um, sometimes, depending upon what the parasite is, they might do a tape test for a baby, or they could use that bag that they used for urine collection for a stool sample as well. Maintain specimen at body temperature for detection of parasitic infections because that's the environment they thrive in. There's occult blood testing. This is to detect blood in the stool. Laboratory determination of occult blood assists in confirmation of presence of blood in black stools and can be helpful in detecting GI lesions, colorectal cancer, um, it can also be very helpful in Crohn's disease as well. Feces for the occult tests are often collected by patient using special test cards, such as the Forsher FOB test and the colon screen. So they will basically, um, this is a sample bottle. They'll put dip a little bit of the stool into the sample, shake it, and then break it onto the cassette, and these would be the test results we'd get from that. Seminal fluid. Semen examined in laboratory to determine effectiveness of a vasectomy, investigate possibility of sexual criminal charges, and assess fertility. Patients given clear instructions for proper specimen collection. Spe semen must be collected in containers that are clean and free of trace detergents and spermicides. In addition, we ask that they abstain from any sexual activity for three days and that they do not get any assistance collecting the sample. They can collect at home, but it needs to come back to the lab within 24 hours. Um, we wanna also avoid exposure to extremes of temperature or light and transportation within two hours is ideal. Think about when we collect every sample, it depends upon the environment it comes from. If it's a dark area it comes from, we need to hear the same directions once it's out of the body. Um, we'll give clear instructions, including written instructions on how to collect this. It's really, really essential that we get the best sample possible, especially for those post-vasectomy, um, because we're determining that the procedure worked correctly. Amniotic fluid, reason for amniotic fluid collection. Fetal abnormalities detect through chromosomal analysis. Chemical test um, procedure used to re remove amniotic fluid and amniocentesis. This can also be really useful in detecting various stages of um, cystic fibrosis or other genetic concerns, and specimen must be protected from light and transported immediately. That concludes Chapter 16, Part 1.
Please view chapter 16.